Northwest Boxing 24-7, what's going on guys? So I got some things to discuss because I've been looking around YouTube and I've been paying attention to boxing for the past couple weeks, right? So anyways, first of all, congratulations to Sean Porter for beating Danny Garcia. I thought that Danny Garcia would win the fight and I personally was going for Danny Garcia, all right? I thought that Sean Porter would have a chance like to maul him and knock him out, but I figured that Danny Garcia was gonna get the decision or knock him out, right? Then it happened. So Sean Porter is now the new WBC welterweight champion of the world. Point blank, period. That's it. Now, Errol Spence walks up to Sean Porter just like Sean Porter did to Danny Garcia, talking about, oh, you got to fight me next. In fact, Errol Spence came up to Sean Porter and he said, hey, just like you called Danny Garcia out, I'm calling you out, right? So Errol Spence, he got all high and mighty and he got all, you know, start huffing and puffing and shit inside Sean Porter's face. You could tell out the gate, Sean Porter was cool. He's cool out that fight. He knows most likely he's gonna get knocked out. Now in that fight, I do actually give Sean Porter a chance to beat Errol Spence, but it's not a big chance, all right? I give Sean Porter like a 20% chance to beat an Errol Spence. But the person who I think will beat Errol Spence for sure is Terrence Bud Crawford. And this is the guy, or actually this is the topic that I wanted to discuss because a couple days ago, after the Sean Porter versus Danny Garcia fight, Errol Spence came on, he was like in a press conference or something, right? And he said that, uh, he said that Terrence Crawford ain't fought nobody, okay? He said that Jeff Horn was a nobody. He said the best person on Terrence Crawford's resume is Gamboa, and Chris Algieri is better than anybody on Terrence Crawford's resume. Really, he's pretty much trying to tell us something opposite of what we're seeing. Because what I've seen is Terrence Crawford beat ass from 135, 140, and now at 147. And in his first fight at 147, unlike a Danny Garcia who fought a washed up Robert Guerrero, right? Who Keith Thurman already beat, who Floyd Mayweather already beat. Terrence Crawford moved up and faced an undefeated fighter who just went 12 rounds with Manny Pacquiao in a war. Okay, Pacquiao could have won. Cool. But either way, he went 12 rounds and had a battle, a back and forth struggle against Jeff Horn, who was a bigger, stronger fighter than Manny Pacquiao. And Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford embarrassed the dude, made him look silly, and took his title. In his first fight at 147, mind you. He beat Victor Postal. I think that a lot of fans are forgetting at the time that Terrence Crawford fought these fighters, they were fucking threats. Victor Postal, everybody was saying that Terrence Crawford was ducking Victor Postal. I had the videos. I made the videos. At the time, Terrence Crawford and Victor Postal were the number one and number two junior welterweights on the planet. Terrence Crawford made him look like a fucking D fighter. In fact, Errol Spence, he brought that up. He said, oh, who'd he beat? Victor Postal, who knocked out Matisse? But who's Matisse? A guy who quits? Bro, did you know that I mean, I mean, where do I start? First of all, at the time, Matisse was still a beast, right? The same Matisse who got beat by Danny Garcia, yes, but he was still a beast at the time that uh, Victor Postal beat him. Victor Postal was the underdog going inside that fight. He was the underdog. He was not the favorite to beat Lucas Matisse. Okay, Errol, Spence, and the fans. Second of all, Victor Postal is a great fighter. He's a great boxer, all right? We knew that out the gate. He had the confidence. He just came off a knockout win over a fighter who's never been knocked out, Lucas Matisse, right? Who's been inside the ring with Zab Judah, uh, Devin Alexander, Danny Garcia, you name it. He's been inside the ring with him. And Victor Postal dropped his ass with a right hand. Terrence Crawford obliterated this dude. Victor Postal just like it was nothing. All right, he was another champion. It was a unification. So you can't take credit away from Terrence Crawford for fighting the number two guy in his division who was undefeated and a beast. The Iceman Postal. I mean, let's get real. I don't know if you guys started watching boxing in 2014, 2015, but Victor Postal was no slouch. We all know this, so stop playing games. Errol Spence fans especially. But he beat Victor Postal. He beat... Felix Diaz. 
who only had one loss against Lamont Peterson and arguably won that fight, right? He was an Olympic gold medalist. He was an Olympian and only had one defeat in a controversial decision. So how is that a slouch? How is that a nobody? I don't get it. Is that just because Terrence Crawford embarrassed the dude and made him look silly? And just, I mean, made that shit look extremely easy like a younger Floyd Mayweather? Is that why? Is that what you guys are doing? Just pulling the old Floyd Mayweather shit? Because the same thing you guys are saying about Terrence Crawford, you said about Floyd Mayweather, damn near, shit, damn near up to the point when Floyd retired, right? Ah, uh, Victor Ortiz, ah, uh, Marcos Maidana, correct? Now, before the Canelo Alvarez fight, everybody was saying, oh, Floyd's gonna fucking get knocked out, Canelo's too big, too strong, this guy's too young. Of course, Floyd Mayweather signs the contract, and then all the fans say, oh, this guy's too green, Floyd's gonna beat him easy, Floyd's too skilled, Canelo's too young. So we know what type of games boxing fans play. But anyways, so Terrence Crawford's resume goes, I mean, he just fought in Dongo and became undisputed, the first undisputed champion in like 11 years from fucking beating an undefeated fighter from Africa, right? Who just came off two fucking great wins against good fighters, against champions, back-to-back -back champions in their hometown. Terrence Crawford knocks this dude out in fucking a few rounds and everybody's saying, oh, Ndongo's a bum. I bet you Ndongo will beat fucking Chris Algieri. Are you serious? And Errol Spence, I mean, speaking of Chris Algieri, though, think about it. Errol Spence said that Chris Algieri is better than anybody on Terrence Crawford's resume, right? Pretty much Errol Spence is saying that Chris Algieri is the best opponent on his resume. If you put Chris Algieri inside the ring with Terrence Crawford, we're all going to find out what happens within a few rounds. I mean, let's not even play games. Right? Mikey Garcia calls out Errol Spence, who's a bigger natural wealth away. He wants no parts of Terrence Crawford. Basil Lomachenko calls out Manny Pacquiao. He doesn't call out Terrence Crawford. Timothy Bradley says that Terrence Crawford will beat Errol Spence. Robert Garcia, the trainer, says that Terrence Crawford beats Errol Spence easily. I don't think he said easily, but he did say it's a guaranteed win for Terrence Crawford. Half of the Mayweather gym says that Terrence Crawford beats Errol Spence. So I don't know where all this shit came from talking about Errol Spence is going to knock out Terrence Crawford and then coming up with the uh, top ranked Showtime excuse. Are you guys serious? Are you guys serious though? Oh, Bud ain't never going to fight nobody. It sounds like you guys don't want Terrence Crawford to uh, be successful. That's what it sounds like. See, I want all the fighters who are willing to fight the best to be successful. But it sounds like you guys have a certain hatred towards Terrence Crawford for no reason. He goes out there, gets knockouts, he beats champions, right? He wanted to fight Manny Pacquiao for the WBO strap before Manny Pacquiao cherry-picked Jeff Horn, or what he thought was a cherry-pick. That's who Manny Pacquiao fought instead of Terrence Crawford. Because Bob Ehrman tried to make that fight since like 2014, 2015. All right, around the time that Floyd Mayweather fought Manny Pacquiao, Bob Aaron been trying to set up Terrence Crawford and Manny Pacquiao to pass the torch. Did Manny Pacquiao want to do that? Nah, he wanted to fight Jesse Vargas and Jeff Horn. But Terrence Crawford, three divisions. He's moving up in weight classes and trying to fight the best. Errol Spence, you're inside your first weight class, buddy. You have not even moved up one division yet. And you're the biggest, strongest guy in your division which is why I always compare Errol Spence's situation to Gennady Golovkin's situation. Because people want to diss Gennady Golovkin and say, oh, well, how come he just doesn't move up, yada, yada. Now I understand that the welterweight division is a hot division. You have a lot of good fights out there, right? Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, now Terrence Crawford. I mean, whatever. Danny Garcia, even though he lost to Sean Porter, same thing. That would still be a big fight. But don't talk like you done moved up three weight divisions already. I challenge Errol Spence to move up to 160 and or fuck it, a 154. Go up and fight a Gennady Golovkin, a Jamal Charlo, a uh, Danny Jacobs. That's when you'll be tested. Cause see, just like Gennady Golovkin, you're the biggest, strongest man on the block, right? So that means you're just mowing through opponents. Okay, so why don't you challenge yourself like everybody else has to do to get some sort of, you know, some respect from the real boxing fans. Because as far as what I hear on YouTube and shit and different interviews with the professionals, not decafs and not fans, but the professionals, 
I'm not talking about dick riders, I'm talking about the professionals, the trainers, the boxers, people who have been inside the ring, all say that Terrence Crawford beats Errol Spence or that Terrence Crawford's a special fighter. Terrence Crawford to young Floyd Mayweather, that came out of Freddie Roach's mouth and Floyd Mayweather himself. How many people do you guys know is saying that Errol Spence is a younger Floyd Mayweather? Dude, you ain't fought nobody. You fought Lamont Peterson last, a Lamont Peterson who got knocked out by the same Lucas Matisse who you say is a quitter. So how can we give you credit for Lamont Peterson when Lamont Peterson got knocked out by the quitter? So you got Felix Diaz and Derry John who arguably beat Lamont Peterson. Terrence Crawford destroys those dudes. And you think that you're going to get clout or respect for beating the guy who got knocked out by Matisse and who arguably lost to those two fighters, to Derry John? But you're not going to give Crawford respect for beating the guys who arguably beat Lamont Peterson and the guy who beat the guy, Lucas Matisse, right? Because Terrence Crawford beat the man who beat the man. Because Lucas Matisse was the man and Victor Postal beat him and Terrence Crawford beat Victor Postal. So he beat the man who beat the man. So you, how can you not give the man who beat the man who beat the man the credit that he deserves? Everything that Errol Spence said inside that interview and in that little speech that he had was all false. I mean, for the most part, right? He's just running straight off emotions. I don't know if dude was drunk or whatever. My bad, my dryer's running and shit, and I'm drinking a little bit, but whatever, right? But anyways, I don't know if Errol Spence was drunk or if the dude was just filled, of emo filled with emotion because it was not logic, right? Oh, who's Terrence Crawford? He ain't fought nobody. False. Oh, uh, Chris Algieri's better than anybody on his resume. False. Oh, I'm an ESPN fighter. Or, no, no, no. He said I'm a Showtime and Fox fighter. I'm not an ESPN fighter. I won't fight on ESPN. You come up with an excuse, right? He, I guarantee you if Danny Garcia fought on ESPN, he would not say, I don't fight on ESPN. I'll fight him on ESPN. I'll fight him anywhere. Errol Spence is a free agent. So why are you making an excuse about making an excuse about any network you're good you can fight on hbo showtime you can do whatever you want bro you're a free agent you're your own boss right so why would you not fight on espn for one fight if it's going to get you a lot of money and it's a big fight now i also find it funny that every time somebody asks errol spence about terence crawford he completely avoids the question he never comes out with a straight answer like yeah i want him next hell yeah i'm going to destroy terence crawford he never says that but what does Terrence Crawford say? He even sends Errol Spence personal messages. Like, yo, I'ma fuck you up. Like even that little uh, that little argument or beef that they had on Twitter in the past couple days, Terrence Crawford, he's like, all right, well fuck all the bullshit because Errol Spence was saying, oh, well let's see who we're both gonna fight in the next eight months or whatever and see whose resume is better. Even though Terrence Crawford, really it don't matter who Errol Spence fights in the next eight months, Terrence, Craw Terrence Crawford still has the better resume. And I don't give a damn what anybody says. All right. Now, none of them are really the only A fighter you could say was Gamboa, but he fought a lot of high B level fighters. That's the thing. See, and they were all champions and they were the best guys available at the time. So you can't knock Terrence Crawford for fighting a guy who's not an A fighter if that's the number two guy in his damn division. Who else is he supposed to face? The number six guy? God damn, you guys are retarded. But anyway, so Errol Spence talking his shit, talking about Terrence Crawford ain't fought nobody. Al Jerry is better than anybody on Terrence Crawford's resume, a kickboxer. A guy who got knocked down six times against Manny Pacquiao. Uh, had a close fight with Amir Khan, who Amir Khan, we all know, is Mr. Glass Chin. I mean, let's just get real. What the fuck would Terrence Crawford do to Chris Al Jerry? He would embarrass that boy in brutal fashion. And we all know this. But who did Errol Spence beat? He beat Lamont Peterson. He beat Chris Algieri. He beat, who else? Carlos El Campo. So for anybody trying to clown Terrence Crawford, who's about to fight an undefeated fighter, who's actually the WBA mandatory for Keith Thurman. I bet you guys didn't know that. But Jose Benavides is the WBA mandatory for that WBA belt. So he's a legit threat. He's undefeated. He has a, a fucking amateur background and shit. So he's not nobody to fuck with. I guarantee you Jose Benavides can beat your average fighter. And that's gonna be a good fight between him and Terrence Crawford, but you got haters trying to downplay it as if Jose Benavides is a nobody just to try to push this agenda that Terrence Crawford ain't facing nobody. It's pretty much the same thing they did with Floyd Mayweather. Let's just be honest. Victor Ortiz, oh, he cheated, even though they ignore the fucking headbutt. Completely ignore the headbutt, right, that Victor Ortiz gave to Floyd, but then you get mad at Floyd for doing, for giving him a legal shot and knocking him out. 
Same shit. Hating. That's all it is. And they're trying to stop Terrence, Crawford, uh, Terrence Crawford's progress in the boxing game because they know that he is the biggest threat inside the whole boxing game. And they'll be damned if another fighter on the coincidental list ends up being that guy once again. And that's what they're trying to prevent. Now also, unfortunately for Errol Spence, before I get back to his resume, Bob Arum did an interview saying that the biggest fight that he wants to make at the end of 2019 is guess what? Oh, that's right. Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence in a big pay-per-view. Oops. Right? So that cuts your whole Bob Arum ain't gonna let Terrence Crawford fight. Cut that shit. Cut the shit. All right? John Molina Jr. is a Showtime fighter, and he fought Terrence Crawford on HBO. So I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. All right? If the two fighters want to fight, the damn fight is going to get done. It's as simple as that. So you can stop making all these bullshit excuses talking about Bob Arum and top rank. That don't have nothing to do with nothing. Okay? But anyways, so Bob Arum said that. He said that's the biggest fight he wants to make. And if you guys think about it, since you claim that they both don't want to fight, even though I believe that Terrence Crawford would probably take that fight early next year if he was given the right money. In fact, he would take that shit right now if he was given the right money because the only thing that Terrence Crawford was talking about is if the business makes sense, right? Errol Spence is the one talking about, I gotta clear the other side of the block first. I'm gonna handle my block and then you handle, or I'm gonna handle my side, then you handle your side, then we'll come together in a big fight. He's the only one talking about, I got other business to take care of first. Terrence Crawford ain't never said that. Terrence Crawford only said if the money's right, the business gotta make sense. That's it. So, um, the plans that Errol Spence has, he plans on fighting Sean Porter, he plans on fighting probably Keith Thurman or whoever, right? He's probably gonna have another mandatory or something. But, shit, by the end of 2019, there you go. He clears, the, he clears his side of the block and Terrence Crawford will be right there fucking available for your ass. Okay. Now, I'm not even going to break down a Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence fight unless that fight actually comes to fruition. But all I'm saying is that Errol Spence was talking a whole bunch of bullshit the other night that did not add up and they were not factual. It was strictly emotion like a straight up decaf. Thanks, Dante. Okay. But, yeah, so those are my thoughts. Errol Spence, I mean, fucking Lamont Peterson, Chris Algieri, Carlos Ocampo, uh, Phil Greco, um, all right, wait, Kell Brook, all right, you did face Kell Brook, but guess what, Kell Brook just came off a vicious knockout loss against a middleweight, not a welterweight, not a junior fucking middleweight, he got knocked out against a middleweight and got his eye socket crushed, and you guys are trying to boast that shit as a great victory for Errol Spence, it was a good victory, but not a great one, if you to beat the undefeated Kell Brook, that wasn't already quitting oh the irony or the hypocrisy i should say so kel brook right he gets his eye broken against gennady golovkin comes back against errol spence and quits inside that fight but then errol spence turns around and says who is matisse the quitter bro kel brook quit against you because his eye socket was fucked up because you fucked up the other one you fucked up something that was already damaged you don't get no fucking brownie points for that shit, bro. You don't get no extra credit. That's, that's not extra credit. If you'd have beat the undefeated Kell Brook, yes, I'd have gave you fucking super props. But this is beating the Kell Brook who literally just came off a knockout loss and had to drain himself back to 147. So this is not a fresh, healthy, undefeated Kell Brook. So if you take out Kell Brook, Chris Algieri and Lamont Peterson from Errol Spence's resume, what do you got? The only person that Kell Brook beat was Sean Porter, and that was a very close, controversial decision. That's a fact. That's not a motion. That is a fact. All right? And then who else he beat? Jojo Dan? Right? And then he went all the way up to face Triple G and got knocked the fuck out. And then he drains himself all the way back down to 147, fights Errol Spence, and now everybody's just jumping for joy as if that was like he just beat uh muhammad ali or mike tyson or some shit no that's not the way it works you're gonna have to fight a fresh fighter fight a fresh undefeated fighter such as yourself preferably one that was bigger than you so that we can see 
how you fight against somebody who's going to try to impose their will and size and power against you. Like you're going to try to do to Terrence Crawford, as Terrence Crawford is now in his third weight class. All right? So anyways, just my two cents. Thought I'd come on here and uh, share it. You know what I'm saying? Talk about it. I ain't talked to y'all in a minute. But I'm coming back. I promise. But uh, yeah, man, this whole Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, I can't wait till this fight happens. I cannot wait. I got my money on TC all day. And I'm being biased. And for a lot of reasons. All right? One reason I'm being biased is because Terrence Crawford has deserved it. Because he worked his way up. All right? He fought good fighters and beat the hell out of him. He makes it look easy. It's not even that Terrence Crawford is fighting these good fighters, like these B fighters or B plus, whatever, but it's the fact that he's making it look like these guys are just completely nobodies. Errol Spence is not doing that. Errol Spence, shit, he's getting outboxed by Kell Brook until the knockout, right? Um, he got outboxed by the Mexican dude, Alejandro Barrera was cracking him with some good right hands. I mean, let's not, let's not fucking be stupid. We have eyes, so everything that Errol Spence is saying inside that press conference, that's not what my eyes see when I watch Terrence Crawford. And the funny thing about that is that he says, oh, but Terrence Crawford is a great fighter though. How can Terrence Crawford be a great fighter if he ain't never fought nobody? That doesn't make sense, Errol. Doesn't make sense, bro. But anyways, uh, tell me what you guys think about this, you know what I'm saying, about this whole discussion between uh, Errol, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia. Now, I would say that by the time the fight happens with Terrence Crawford and uh, Errol Spence, that's just going to be huge because if, um, if a Terrence Crawford can get that Manny Pacquiao fight or if he can get the Amir Khan fight or if he can get even, even the Keith Thurman fight before Errol Spence and then Errol Spence fights like Sean Porter and then somebody else good, you know what I'm saying, in the spring of next year, Man, that fight would be heated. But they both got to be dominant. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot that goes into that. But anyways, man, I'm about to chill. So I'll holler at y'all later. If you have not subbed to my channel, sub right now. It's Northwest Boxing 24-7. Coming at you live. And I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.